Well, one possibility would simply be if the broker went short the call option, so we could ignore this for a second. If I just delete this out. If the broker went was short a call option, the way they would hedge that position would be just to go long. So select data, uh, add a long position, long call, and we have the values here for the underlying, and we have the values here for the long position. Okay, and if we look at that, the negative, the risk, if you go short the call option, the risk are 100,000 call options. The risk is that at expiry, the value of the underlying would be in excess of 100. So a perfect hedge, right, a perfect hedge would just be go long, take a buy position on 100,000 call options. And so the negative here would be offset by the positive here. Uh, but that begs the question, why would you short in the first place? And it, uh, only one explanation here would really stand up, and that would be where the broker has some kind of market power and can charge more for options than what they purchase options for. So if you have, if you're a large broker in the market and you have market power and you exercise an influence over the price, the market, you may be able to dictate a higher price when you sell than what you have to pay when you buy. And maybe you can lock in some kind of arbitrage. That implies some kind of market imperfection, which customarily wouldn't be wouldn't always have to be there. So it's an unusual type situation uh, and it would mean that the market, we're accepting the market's inefficient. Another possibility here is to go back to what we initially started with. If you went short the option, you could go long the stock. So a long position stock, which is given here by this payoff, the payoff really being defined as the difference between the stock and K. So, okay, fine. If the stock price goes up, you're perfectly hedged. Like loss here is offset by gains here. But problem is you're taking on board the losses down the side uh, and you've just exchanged upside risk for downside risk which is pointless as well. An alternative then, or an improvement on that, would be to engage in what's called a dynamic stop loss. Dynamic stop loss, which is what Hull uh, describes uh, in, his in his chapter on the Greeks. So if we go back to the notes here, um, if you have the short position on the option, you could take a, na a naked position, in other words, just accept the risk. Or you could buy 100,000 shares, that's the static position, right? But its upside losses have been now exchanged for, sh uh, or upside risks have been swapped for downside risks. And that doesn't, uh, wouldn't appear to make a lot of sense. Or a more sophisticated implementation of stop loss, uh, of an implementation of a long position would be to use stop loss. And stop loss in this instance would mean when the stock price went above, slightly above the exercise, perhaps you'd fully buy up. So if we go back, the stop loss would say, okay, if the stock price goes above 100, you'd buy up, so you're covered. But over the life of the option, if the stock price went below, particularly towards expiry, you'd try to sell out as, quick, as quickly as you could. So it's dynamic in the sense that you're buying just as the stock price goes up, but you're selling out when the stock price goes below the exercise. The problem with that st strategy is that it's a buy high, sell low. You're always buying at a high price and selling for low. And so you could imagine where you buy fully 100,000 stock at 101 and then uh, sell the same 100,000 stock when the stock price falls to 99. So 
this type of strategy imposes fairly significant ongoing costs, particularly if the stock during the life of the option loops through the exercise uh, and rebounds. And every time the stock you buy at 101 and sell at 99, it's a loss of two dollars. Now, if that happens five times, then you scale it by five. Uh, and if it's a hundred thousand, of course, then scale up again. So uh, that type of strategy is probably not a pra practical st strategy, and it also implies large market interventions. So even if we never heard of Black Shoals, and we never, it was never something that we've uh, understood as being a celebrated part of uh, the Black Shoals model. Uh, even if we weren't familiar with dynamic replication, this type of strategy might just emerge organically in in markets, in option markets, as a as a as a strategy to deal with dynamically hedging. Okay, and the way this strategy works is we can think of it this way: that the the delta, if I can maybe explain. If we had sold, and this is not really, the maths here unfortunately is a little bit lagging, so, but just to give you kind of a crude outline, if we had sold 100,000 call options, then what uh, delta hedging would imply is that we should go long delta times the stock. And so the idea would be if, as the stock price, as the option changes in value it's a result of the stock price changing and if we could take an appropriate delta long position we could offset losses from the uh, from the short option position okay so uh, again a little bit of what is the dynamic here delta strictly speaking this first derivative is the slope of the Black Shoals call parabola, which we've generated before. And if the stock price is really low compared to the exercise, then it's flat, and the slope is flat, and it's basically a slope of zero. But if it's high, if the uh, slope is high, uh, sorry, if the stock price is high relative to the exercise, then this slope would also tilt upwards and you find that the slope is will approximate one for one so the slope goes between zero and one and we've seen that before when we looked at delta in the previous delta videos okay so uh, okay so how do we implement this strategy well to implement the strategy we're going to try and set out this, we're tr going to try and create a portfolio that looks like this, mimic this portfolio. And so what we're going to try and demonstrate is if we sell 100,000 call options, as what is suggested here in the initial problem, then we will buy delta times the stock. And this strategy is dynamic, so it means we constantly rehedge or re rebalance. In other words, as the stock price changes, and the time period changes, as time elapses during the life of the options, the delta value will change as well. So we constantly keep re-estimating the delta over the life of the option so that the position that we build up in the stock will offset the position in the option. And this delta can take the value between 0 and 1, never exceeds 1, doesn't, it's never inferior or less than zero so we're either fully bought up 100,000 stock or sold out which is in many respects very similar to what's proposed by the stop loss except the main difference is we'd never fully buy up 100,000 or sell out 100,000 when we open up the position it's much more incremental uh, maybe never is too strong, but the likelihood is if the stock price, if the stock value, the value of the stock is close to the option and we have a short position of 100,000 calls, then the way we hedge that is to go long 
uh, 100,000 times 0 0.63 stock. So we take 100,000 times that, and it's we should go along 63,683 stock.